It was a Friday night, back in 2018. I was working at home on a paper I needed to finish for work, and was trying to get it done so I could enjoy my weekend without having to worry about it. It was probably somewhere around 10 at this point, but I'd been working in my office for a good three hours. This was after a full day already too, so I was getting pretty exhausted. I kept finding myself getting distracted or losing focus, so I paused what I was doing and stood up to stretch my legs and try to wake myself up. I paced around the room a bit, but as I passed by the wall opposite of my desk, I noticed something move in the window. I stopped and did a double take, looking out the window again. I was on the second story of my house, but the window has a view of the front portion of the property by the garage and porch. At first, I didn't see anything and thought my mind was playing tricks on me, but then I saw a bit of movement again. It was a shadow hovering over the sidewalk leading up to the porch. Someone was standing outside the front door, or at least that's what it looked like from the shadow. After looking out the window for a couple minutes and seeing the shadow barely move, I left my office and went downstairs. I leaned on the front door and looked out the peephole. There was a man looking about 40 years old and bald with a scruffy gray beard. I watched for a moment. He never knocked or rang the doorbell or made any noise at all. He just stood there. What started freaking me out more was that I didn't know how long he'd been there for since I was working and never noticed him until just a couple minutes ago. Wanting some answers to why the man was here, I opened the door. Immediately, I was taken aback because the man didn't even flinch. His face stayed the same, being cold and lacking emotion. What are you doing here? I said in a stern tone. The man continued to look at me, but didn't answer. Then his eyes moved past me and looked down the hallway in my home. I moved the door further in toward my body to hide the view. I don't know why you're here, but you need to leave. I said, closing the door firmly. His strange behavior was both creepy and aggravating. Him ignoring me and just standing there made me really frustrated, but then I heard his footsteps begin walking off the porch and away from the house. I sighed in relief and checked to be sure he'd gone away, then went back up to my office. Trying to forget about the man and focus back on my work, I continued where I left off. About five minutes later, and just as I was beginning to really start working, a sudden knock echoed through the house. It was from the front door, but the knocks were loud, like someone banging on the door with their whole fist. Irritated, I got up and quickly ran down to the front door, swinging it open aggressively with the intent to yell at the man. But when I saw him, I quickly changed my mind. Something about the look in his eyes and the way he was standing instantly shifted my anger into fear. I looked down at his hands, seeing him holding something to his side like he was trying to conceal it from me. All I could make out was the top of a small handle resembling that of a knife. I looked back up at him, only to see his whole body jolt toward me. I jumped back and slammed the door shut, then fought to lock it as the man was trying to turn the handle from the other side. Once I got the handle and the bolt lock latched, the man started banging on the door again for several seconds before running away. I stood there with barely any breath in me, feeling my adrenaline still surging through my body. Shakily, I went to the office and called 911. The man was never seen after that, and no real answers to what happened that night were ever found. Last winter, I went on a trip to see a few of my friends from college. The drive was 18 hours, so I did it in two 9-ish hour sections, staying at an Airbnb on the way there. 
It was the same thing on the way back, but I'd booked a different Airbnb, just for fun I guess. I thought it would be nice to see some different areas and whatnot. Anyway, a bit of heavy snow caused some delays, and I didn't get to the town until 9pm. It was a very small area, which I was already aware of because there were pretty much no big towns or cities at the halfway point of the 18 hour drive. The last Airbnb was in a small town as well, but this one was noticeably much smaller. A few stores bordered the road, but all the houses were either on farms or just really far apart. When I got to my Airbnb, it was no different, being pretty far from other houses. However, the outside was somewhat modernized. It clearly had some cabin-style features, but it almost looked out of place compared to all the other houses I could see. I parked on the gravel driveway and went up to the door, putting in the code and going inside the house. I'd seen the pictures of the inside online, and it looked about the same. I went around and checked out all the rooms, then put my things in the bedroom and went out to the couch. As soon as I sat down and picked up the remote, I heard a tapping noise from right behind me. I quickly turned my head, seeing a woman outside the window tapping on the glass. Her hair was unkempt and long, and she had a crazy sort of look in her eyes. Once she got my attention though, she pointed toward the front door and walked away from the window. I got up, still with my heart racing from the unexpectedness of it, and made my way to the door. Knowing it was just some old lady, I didn't exactly feel scared, but I was definitely not feeling safe either. I cracked the door just enough to talk to her. She smiled and said she needed help. I waited for a second for her to explain, but after a moment, I asked what she needed help with. She looked behind her, saying she lost something in the road just outside the house. I looked out, not being able to see anything past the lowly lights of the Airbnb. I'm not really sure I can help with that, I said. Her smile left her face, and then she repeated herself, like the whole thing about her losing something on the road, repeating it almost word for word. Yeah, I know. I don't think I can help. Sorry. I said again, closing the door. I waited for a minute, until I could hear her leave, then I went back to the couch. I wasn't sure if she was just some crazy lady, or if there was something else going on but it was just a very strange way to be introduced to the town. I relaxed and turned on the TV, watching some shows until 11 when I got in bed. I think I still felt a bit uncomfortable because I found it difficult to fall asleep. All I remember is laying in bed restless for a whole hour, then abruptly waking up sometime in the middle of the night. There was a sound coming from the front of the house it was quiet, but with the rest of the house being silent, it stood out. My mind immediately went to the lady from earlier as I got up from the bed and nervously walked down the hallway and looked at where I was hearing it from. The front door. I rushed over to stop them, but the door opened just as I got my body against it. I pressed all my weight into the door, as whoever was on the other side seemed to do the same. I'm a pretty big guy, so whoever it was out there had to be big too, because for a moment it felt like they might actually overpower me and get the door open, but they gave up after a few seconds of pushing and sprinted down the driveway. I locked the door and ran to the window, trying to get a view of who they were but they were already past the light. I thought through my options for a second, then ran to grab my things from the bedroom and went out to my car, driving away. I didn't want to be at that house any longer, and I knew police in a small town like that wouldn't be all that helpful. I don't know who was behind that door, but I'm sure they had to have been with the woman from earlier that night. If I had went out to help her, or if I had woken up even a second later, I don't think I would have been seen again after that night.
I was out camping in Colorado a few years ago during fall. This camping trip was an impulse decision, as I just felt like going out for the night and spending it in the calming nature. I had walked down a two hour trail that led to the spot I set up at. It wasn't a big campground like all the other places were. This was a small opening at the end of a dirt path that I'd found a couple years back and nobody else ever seemed to come here. The forest around the opening was really nice too, and over the years I've gotten used to navigating it without getting lost. On this day, just an hour or so before sunset, I set out on a short walk around the area. Going for walks around this time is always the best, being that the woods are calm and the breeze starts to set in. I walked out and around for maybe 20 minutes before I saw something ahead. A man walking in the woods just like me. He was crossing in front of me about 60 yards out, so pretty far, and he didn't look like he noticed I was there. But what was odd was the way he was walking. He was motioning his hands around and nodding his head, and although I couldn't hear him, I could see his mouth moving like he was talking. I waited to see if maybe someone was following behind him, but no, it was just him talking to himself. Maybe it wasn't something to get overly creeped out on, but I'd never seen anyone out here before, and the man didn't exactly look normal. After a minute though, he was gone. I turned around and went back to my tent, not really feeling comfortable being out in the woods with that guy wandering around. I waited a half hour, then got a campfire going as the sun was now set. I had a folded chair I was sitting on, and I mostly just thought to myself for the next hour. Not about anything particular, but more in a way to clear my mind. Then about two hours past sunset, I heard something in the distance. I moved away from the crackling fire and toward the trees so I could hear better. It was someone talking or mumbling far out in the woods. Even stranger though, I didn't see a flashlight or any source of light. He was walking out there in the pitch black. My stomach dropped knowing it was extremely unlikely that the man from earlier could have just stumbled upon my campsite by accident. I stayed and listened, hoping that by some chance he didn't know I was here and was just passing by. 30 seconds later, the voice faded out. I wasn't fully convinced this was all just chance though. I covered most of the fire, leaving only a small flame burning so it wouldn't create too much light. Then I waited and listened. The next hour was unnerving to say the least. I didn't hear or see anything, but it was the anticipation that kept me feeling uneasy. And then, at what had to be 11pm by now, footsteps came rushing from directly in front of my campfire. I shot up from my chair and unholstered my pistol. As a man, I recognized as the one from earlier, ran up to the other side of the fire and stopped just 10 feet from me. He wasn't talking anymore, but instead had a grin. Not an over-the-top smile, but just a slight, friendly grin. As I aimed at him, he said nothing and did nothing. He just looked at me. Walk away, right now. I said under my breath, trying to be as intimidating as possible. He looked me in the eyes, then down at my gun, and then back at me. His grin went away, and there was a moment where it felt like he was just about to do something. But then he smiled again and walked off into the woods. I didn't waste any time packing things up with one hand as I kept my pistol out, then left in the opposite direction from where he went. The whole way back, I was so paranoid that I kept thinking I was hearing the man's voice talking to himself again. What he was doing out there, and what he was trying to do to me, is anyone's best guess. Had I not been prepared though, 
I don't think I would have been able to leave those woods.